All right, and welcome back to another episode of Catching Colorado. Today we have a fun one. We are going to be tying up a drowned or sunken trico. We're starting with a U202 size 22 hook. I almost never tie any other size than a size 22. These are very small flies, especially where I fish them here on deckers. You might have an instance where you tie them up to a size 18 or down to a size 24, but I find the 22 is a really good match for what we have here on the South Platte. They have that translucent color, and I think you get any bigger, they're a little too noticeable. So what I'm gonna tie on now is a 70 UTC black thread, and I'm gonna start it about a hook eye behind the eye of the hook. I'm gonna stop right about here and cut this tag off. Snip it close. And then we are going to continue down to just about the barb of the hook, I'll say. And stop there. All right, so I have a bundle of these hairline mayfly tails. They're very thin tails. I'm gonna grab about three in my hand and I'm gonna line them up on the near side of the hook and I'm going to wrap a thread wrap around them just to kind of bring them on top of the hook, get them situated to exactly where I want them, and then just continue rolling that thread around, headed back towards the back of the hook, and then come forward, and I will now snip the tag ends off close, and then we are going to just cover up those butt ends and then work our way right back down the fly. We don't want to bulk up this fly too much. We want to keep them pretty skinny. All right, so this part can be a little bit challenging. I'm just using the uh, blade of my scissor to try to pull the two tails 60 degrees apart on the outside and leave the middle tail fairly straight. And once I have that lined up, to you know about where I want it which I'm pretty close here uh, then I think you know you're you're gonna be set um, with the right look so 60 degrees on both sides and then one tail straight back I know it's kind of hard to see with the white background here and then what I want to do is I want to take this UV not sense product you could also use bone dry here but I want to take some sort of uh, UV cure and I want to just put it on a bodkin and barely tap it right on the back part of the thread and the beginning part of the tail. And what this is gonna do is really lock in right where those fibers are and they won't move from here on forward. And that's kind of what we want. We wanna keep those separated out. I think the trout see and key in on that. Um, so we're gonna dab that little uh, knot sense on there and then hit it with this UV light just to really cure it and make sure everything's settled. That little trick I gained from Tim Flagler from Tightline Video, a uh, really professional fly tire that uh, always has some tips and tricks that I find myself using more often than not. And then speaking of another uh, fly tire, Ed Engel uh, gave me this tip here where you're actually gonna tie in a UTC black small wire now, this is going to help this fly break the surface. And so we're just going to line it up on the inside of the hook here. And we're going to spin a couple wraps around. And then we're going to pull that wire back and roll our thread up to that 80% point. And this is really going to give us a seamless tie-in point where we don't actually have to curl the back end around the hook. We can just move forward here uh, by bringing that wire up to the thread. So just like you would with uh, Copper John, I'm kind of keeping this wire nice and tight and trying to uh, build wraps that are touching each other. Um, this is not a midge. We are not trying to build segmentation, um, although it will kind of look like that. We are trying to give some weight to this fly and keep those very, very tight. Once we get it to the 80% mark, we're going to go ahead and do a couple capture wraps and... Oop, Get right behind that copper wire. Oh man, almost there, working on it, got it. And then what we're gonna do is get our hands close and we can helicopter free 
both the front and the back of the wire. Uh, so this again, you don't have to kind of wrap the back around or worry about a, a setting point for the wire. Um, you're just able to helicopter both off and uh, it's very clean. So that'll give us the weight that we need for the fly. All right, for the next step of this fly, I'm gonna take some fluorescent white Antron. And this is about a three, four inch piece. We wanna cut that down to about an inch. So I'm just gonna trim that up here. And it looks about this length when you're done. And then what I wanna do is take it right down the middle and split it apart. We do not need that whole piece of Antron. So this will do two flies. We're gonna split it right down the middle and then we are going to begin tying it in. Little tip and trick, if you need to, you can wet the Antron just to make it a little bit more uh, put together. But I am going to do a couple cross wraps here just to hold it in place. Just try to get this thing laid out exactly where I want it. So you can do a few, you can do more than a few, but I do some cross wraps and then I do, you know, maybe a wrap in front and a wrap behind. Just trying to line these wings up so they look just right. I think that's about good. So I'm going to dip back now into my black rabbit dubbing and I'm going to build a very small noodle on this thread. Maybe about an inch and a half to two inches and what we're going to do is just kind of tie this over uh, that wing. We want to make sure that it looks like a little bit of a buggy head to the fly. Again, these are not big insects so we want to keep this as thin and small as possible while also kind of covering some of the thread work I think I have a little bit too much dubbing on here um, what you can do is kind of work it down and then you can sort of peel it off if you feel like you got too much um, and that'll help you just kind of make sure that you got it the, the right thickness so I'm gonna put just one little dab right here behind the eye and I think that looks just about right and then I'm going to head for my whip finish tool and we are going to complete a three or four turn whip finish here right behind the eye. And you can push some of that dubbing back if you'd like, but really just build up a thread head here. So it's very easy to tie size 22 is not an easy fly to get on tip it. Um, then I'm going to grab my scissors and trim this thing close. And I would say we're getting pretty close to a nice trico pattern here. As a last step, I'm going to trim these wings to about half a body length. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And this will just give it kind of the, the exact length you're looking for for a drowned or sunken spinner. Um, and then I'm going to take my finger and just kind of push in the ends here. And that'll sort of splay out those Antron fibers and give you a little bit more of a wing. Uh, and, and it looks pretty good too. Let me just clean up some... Some rabbit dubbing here, make it look good. And I think we're well on our way with this fly. So again, a size 22 Trico drown spinner, perfect little mayfly tail there. And uh, this fly will absolutely put fish in the net for you. Um, and I think you're absolutely gonna love it. If you want this little back piece here, you could use that bone dry. Uh, it doesn't really affect the fly too much. If you fold these wings back, you can actually see it blends right in with that uh, knot sense, which is how these trichos drown. Their wings kind of go back. So not worried about it at all. I think it's a great, perfect little imitation pattern, and I hope you have success with it on the water. Keep in mind, this is a very difficult pattern to fish on its own. So I like to fish it behind a parachute Adams or maybe a small elk hair caddis or even a dry BWO. Uh, just something where you can see the movement around this fly. And if anything pops up near it, you set the hook. Um, I don't know if there's any better fly that I've used for a trico spinner fall. Um, it just seems to work. It's subsurface fly that really uh, puts the fish in the net for you. So if you could leave your comments down below, let me know what other flies you'd like me to tie. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate you guys watching today. Hope you enjoyed this tie and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more relatable content, you can check out these videos right here. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can stay updated on our next adventures.